Hey Hiya then folks, it's me, the Tight Yorkshireman, here on our boat, Leander Lady, where we're continuing on with our project, boating on a budget. As I'm sure you saw last time, we brought the boat from its own mooring in Rotherham, up to this end of town at Doncaster, ready to go in the dry dock. We're going to get her out, we're going to clean the bottom off, fingers crossed we don't find any major issues, and then over the course of this week, we're going to be re-blacking the bottom and maybe touching up a bit of the paintwork on the rest of the hull. But we'll see how that goes. The, the main priority is obviously getting this bottom re-blacked, ready to get back in the water, so we can then start the rest of the project. And as you can probably hear behind me and see just there, I've got the kettle on. So I'm going to have a quick brew while I wait for Marina to open and then we'll get cracking and we'll get this boat sorted. And I think you'd call it typical that while waiting to go into a covered dry dock it starts throwing it down. I'm stood here in the rain soaking wet. Well that's stage one complete then. We're in the dry dock. Although as you notice it's not very dry. But that there is the hose for the pump that'll pump all the water out. First off though, you might just about be able to make out through those plastic doors that the gates aren't shut yet. The guys have gone off to drag another boat into the open dry dock and then they're going to come back and deal with this one because this is going to be a little bit tricky because we are a V-bottom boat so obviously getting it to sit on the bottom right without toppling over is going to be a little bit interesting. What they'd normally do is put straps onto the roof rails and fasten that to the side. But unfortunately, being a fiberglass top, that's not an option, as it might well remove the roof a bit quicker than we actually anticipated. But I've got every faith, we'll get it sorted and we'll get this water out by the end of the day. Blacking a boat is a very slow, laborious and quite frankly boring process. It starts off by bringing the boat into the dry dock and then over the course of about three hours having the water pumped out so you end up on the bottom. You then spend another couple of hours scraping the hull to then spend a couple of hours jet washing the hull followed by a fair few hours scraping the hull again and then finally you sand it before painting it three times with bitumen paint so what you'll find with this vlog is we've kind of missed a lot of the detail out because there's plenty of videos out there that show blacking about Therefore, we've largely stuck to the specifics of what we found as we did the work. But we did think you probably didn't want to sit here for hours on end watching repeating footage of us scraping, sanding, scraping, sanding, then painting, then painting, then painting again. It should be a bit different though as the project progresses. As obviously when we start doing the exciting stuff, like building kitchens and bathrooms and bedrooms, and not to mention putting a whole new roof on the boat, I think that should be a little more interesting than watching us painting black paint onto the bottom of a hull. But at least for now, you can see what sort of boat we've bought, see what condition it's in, and hopefully we can see that it's a boat that's worth spending our time and money on to make it our full time liveaboard home. Here we are then, in with the actual boat, down in the dry dock, well, nearly dry dock anyway. We'll have a quick look round. First off, 
you look under there, you can see there is still a reasonable portion of an anode. And we can see right down to the keel. Looking along the waterline, it doesn't actually look too bad. A little bit of surface rust here and there. But we don't seem anything that's too bad. Certainly in the initial inspection, nothing other than bubbles and no major sort of pitting. There are a a few spots but initial reaction to the side is not too bad and then looking from the rear you come along again you can see rough spots along the side but again nothing too bad clearly all the older bitumen has already worn off we do believe it was about seven years ago it was last lacked and the new anode fitted so I suppose it's to be expected and again if you look underneath you can just see there the old anode with just a little bit of life left in it but I'm going to talk to the lads here and I think we'll be needing new anodes fitting and I'm now going to have a good check around the rest of the hull and see what we think to that In closer inspection the only bit that does initially seem to raise any uh, concern is just this little bit here I'm not sure whether that's just a build up of stuff on the metal or whether it is starting to highlight a bit of an issue just along this sort of section the rest of it all seems nice and flat and straight but that just seems a little bit kind of bowed but as I say, I'm not sure whether that's a build up of stuff or whether we're going to have to have a look at that. Fortunately, as you can see, as soon as I got the scraper on it, it all just dropped off. It was just a big blob of rust and mess. And once that was gone, the hull looked exactly the same as the rest of it. One thing that has come to light getting the boat out of the water is it does seem to have this sort of uh, more traditional boat type keel than you expect on an arrow boat. It was all the way along. And if I can get the camera down low enough, you can see it does go right the way from the bow right down to the stern where it meets the swim. It's a little bit different. Just to show you there, one thing we have sort of found as we've got the boat out is especially down these sides there is very little of the boat actually sat in the water. The main bit is obviously the, the V-shaped hull that sat in the water and obviously over recent times it has been sat sort of back heavy. So this front bit, the sides of it have only been what, about three or four inches in the water. I think what we are going to try and do is, when we redo the boat, is rebalance that so it does bring this front end down a bit. It should sit better in the water and it will stop things like the wind taking the boat, which, not excusing my little uh, error, shall we say, the other day coming through the lock. But the more the front end sits in the water, the less chance there is of the wind grabbing hold of it and spinning it around probably difficult to pick up on the camera but see obviously at this stage here along the hull which is sort of three quarters of the way down the boat it's obviously had at some stage a fair old impact which obviously where it's pushed that in it's kind of in turn pushed the bottom out slightly there doesn't appear to be any significant damage and obviously no real wear into the hull or anything just uh, must have had something get it a fair old whack to manage to have done that to the side of the hull especially on that corner edge because that's generally where you'd expect the most strength 
just doing a quick initial scrape before the, uh, the lads get the jet wash on it. I'm just coming down towards the back of the swim. There does appear to be a little bit of pitting sort of towards this back end. I'm not sure if it's anything significant enough to need plating or welding right now. Might just be something to bear in mind. This is the starboard side. And it's perhaps not quite as good as the port side. Some of the rust, I wouldn't say was majorly bad, but we certainly took hold a little bit more than the, uh, the port side. We'll see how it looks once it's jet washed off. And see whether it reveals any nasties. So we've now had a jet wash down. And to be honest, I'm pretty pleased with what I'm seeing. For a boat built in 1977, and as far as we know, it's never been plated since, she's in pretty good condition. There is, as a first thought when I saw the boat after it come into the dry dock and we started doing the scraping, just sort of little areas like this, round the stern, where there is a little bit of pitting. But in all honesty, it's not too bad. And I don't think for now we're really going to do anything with that. We'll just make sure we get them good three coats of bitumen on it. And it'll be something to bear in mind that when we do come to get the boat out in future, that we might just have to do a little bit of work, either touching up with a bit of welding or even a little bit of overplating. But like I say, in all honesty, I'm more than impressed how she's looking. We're now on the afternoon of the second day in the dry dock and I'm having a lovely time scraping away under there. Because with it being a V-bottom boat, most of the bit that's actually under the water is funnily enough that V section. So although on a normal narrowboat you wouldn't generally black the bottom this one basically does need it so the only thing I can do is more or less lie on the floor and scrape away obviously the jet wash got a lot of the loose stuff off so I'm just kind of scraping the scabs off if you like but it really is a fun way to spend an afternoon Well then, that brings us to the end of day two here in the dry dock. Making progress, nothing exciting. And as you can see, it's mucky work. Scraping under the hull, scraping the side of the hull, sand in the hull. Yeah, nothing exciting. But it's stuff that needs to be done. So we'll be back tomorrow, day three in the dry dock, and we'll carry on. And all being well, dawns with me tomorrow. That means extra cups of tea and a little bit of help. Morning, Dawn. Good morning, Peter. Turn it off. How are you this morning, Dawn? Uh, I'm okay. Already? Yeah. You've met a brew, though, haven't you? Down there. Yeah, we've got a brew. So here we are, day three in the dry dock. Tight Yorkshireman and Dawn. And what we're doing for the day? Grafting. Grafting. <laughs> We've got sanding, <laughs> scraping, sanding, scraping, and hopefully painting. Hopefully. Hopefully. So we'll crack on and we'll see you in a few hours when we're ready to put some paint on. Crack on, Dawn. Right, Peter. Time for my brew. Just to highlight then what all the scraping and sanding is all about is obviously areas like this where there's clearly three or four layers of paint being built up over the years 
and is now sort of obviously dried and cracked. What we're just trying to do is get that sort of back to being smooth. We're not talking new plastered wall smooth, just that there's no ridges or anything like that. Partly so it looks a little bit nicer if it's kind of smooth, but also the bitumen should go on better and fingers crossed it should stop any areas that are going to open up in future and allow water to get through. So it is a very time consuming and boring job. I think I've mentioned boring a few times already in this video, but unfortunately it is an essential part as without doing this that means your boat might not float and then in my eyes a boat's not a boat if it's not floating so then Dawn we're a couple of hours into this uh, well my third day your first day on the job and we've got down to this front end and there were a little case of who done it weren't there it so, has an outage who did the outage Dawn was it you was it me you did it I didn't do it I'm good. It look was me. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Mm. It was me, I confess. <laughs> I was in charge when we crashed. Oh. Whoopsie. Oh well. And here we have Peter doing his favourite thing in all the world. I love painting. Especially black paint underneath the boat. Happy days. Being the tight Yorkshireman, I found what seems to be a cheaper way of finding out how thick your hull is as opposed to having a survey done. Well, let's go on Amazon and buy one of these metal thickness testers. This cost about 70 quid, including delivery. Although it did need batteries as well, even though I'm sure on the advert it said it included batteries, but never mind. But yeah, got this. We've just gone round the hull, testing the thicknesses. And as you'll see there, not marvellous, but they're all right. I mean, most of them are over four point, um, sorry, five point something. There's a few that drop into the fours. And ironically enough, most of them, the thicker reading was down at the bottom and the thinner reading was sort of higher up the hull. I'd have expected it to be the other way around really. But like we said, we've gone round, checked it. It's all satisfactory. Didn't cost me the price of a survey. And we know that when we come to deal with stuff, like these few bits of pitting, we know roughly what we're starting from. Gives us an idea before we even get out of the water next time. What we're looking at. So we're now about ready to start putting some paint on her. We've had a fun day, haven't we, love? We have. It's been thrilling. Sanding and scraping. Scraping and sanding. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so let's get the painting stuff out. Let's get some bitumen on her, and then let's get off home to the pub. Yeah. Now we're actually putting some blacking on, and I won't really believe the difference a coat of paint can make. Transforming it. And that's a full side finished. Taking a bit of doing, but we'll get in there, get him right down and right under, and covering it all in a good coat of bitumen to start with. Here we are then, end of the day. Been a good day? So far, so good. No, it's been a horrible day. <laughs> <laughs> a horrible day. We're both covered in pain. <laughs> and both a wee bit tired shall we say yeah definitely ready tired. for his tea but as you'll see 
we have got a coat of blacking on, which is what we set out to do. It, it looks great. Yeah, it, it looks there. great, but to be honest, with the work and effort, it should be diamond coated or something. <laughs> you might get the impression I'm, I'm not feeling the love for this kind of job. <laughs> Roll on fitting kitchens and bathrooms and things, not scrumming about blacking boats. But <laughs> hence why we've not done this as a very big, big vlog, have we? We're just you know, edited highlights just to show we have blacked the boat. And I think then that'll leave this vlog here because we've got two more coats to do but if we show that it'll literally be like watching paint dry it would and <laughs> it's boring <laughs> very boring so yeah hopefully join us again in a week or two as we've got the boat out the dry dock back on the water and that's when the fun really begins and i might start smiling again <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. so we'll see you all later folks bye bye